I'm Jim Carlson and live from the Gallup Studios here in Omaha, Nebraska. This is Gallup's Theme Thursday, Season 4, recorded on July 12th, 2018. Theme Thursday is a, well, a Gallup webcast series that dives deep into the Clifton Strengths themes one theme at a time, and today's theme is emp empathy. If you have questions, comments, or contributions during this webcast, we do have a live chat room that's available for you right below the main video window. If you just peek, take a peek down there. Bottom left-hand corner, it says login. Choose the guest account. Put your name in there. Take those numbers out. Put submit, and we'd love to have you join us for at least for questions during or in the post show, which is really important. We take a lot of questions from you in the chat room during the post show. If you're listening to the recorded version of this or have questions about uh, custom strengths coaching solutions, you can send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. Don't forget to visit the Gallup Strength Center, just gallupstrengthcenter.com. For all your Clifton Strengths coaching resources and training needs, you can also catch the video and, and both streaming and downloadable audio for offline listening. We call that podcasting. It's available for you as a resource on our coaches blog, our new redesigned coaches blog. Hopefully you've had a chance to go out and take a peek at it. That's all found at coaching.gallup.com. One more thing, if you're listening on either iPhone or Android, there's both new apps for that as well on those platforms. So make sure you're finding those and subscribing in those apps. You can subscribe on YouTube if you like, and more of you are doing that. It'll send you a notification every time we go live, which is really, really cool. Spreaker is the same way. If you're an audio listener only through our Spreaker platform, you can do that as well. Micah Labyrinth is our host today. She works as a workplace consult consultant here at Gallup. Micah, I'm super excited. I can barely talk because we've got like, 500 people on campus for the summit. Welcome to Theme Thursday. Already, 500 already now and 1,400-ish like next week. Phenomenal. It's going to be amazing. Although for some folks are listening this way after the fact and they're like, I don't care about the summit. I only care Stop about empathy. Stop summiting empathy me. <laughs> Let's talk about empathy today. That's the subject we're doing. Let's, uh, let's dig into a little bit. And uh, Micah, let's start with what is empathy? Really beautiful relationship building theme. Empathy is what we call that sort of sixth sense theme. It is experiencing the emotion of others, feeling what other people feel, connecting by people by sensing. Uh, people with high empathy are emotionally intuitive. Um, I, I think it's about knowing through being present and, and really paying attention to other people. What's the best of empathy? Wh wh when are we at our best for those that have it real high? The service or value that you really can bring when you're at your best is serving as a, an emotional barometer. Uh, you're understanding not just your message, but how it's being absorbed by others um, and how other people's messages are also being absorbed by others. I also think about empathy as, or maybe sort of that super extension of empathy as not just being able to sense, but to anticipate the reaction, um, anticipate the needs of other people and tailor your work to meet those needs. If relevance is really what you're aiming for and in adult learning, we're aiming for relevance, in behavior change, we're aiming for relevance. I think in sales, you're aiming for relevance. If that's really what you're looking for, empathy can help you increase your accuracy toward that bullseye um, on something that can be a moving target. Target. What's relevant keeps changing, but empathy helps you listen for what's really landing with people, listen for meaning. And, and when something is meaningful, listen for how it's best being heard. Micah, sometimes that sixth sense or that superpower, as we've called it, the ability to maybe sense things in people before they even realize, that sounds a little mystic to some people. How would you, re how would you respond to that? I mean, empathy is this powerful theme uh, in kind of understanding the group dynamic or understanding how someone's feeling. What would you say to that, uh, to that description? I would say that all of our themes sound a little bit crazy on their own. <laughs> if you um, if you come back to some folklore around um, Gallup's research on into talent in general, um, I remember a story about uh, when we were studying really successful hockey players, and I've probably told this in a podcast before. Uh, but uh, the the best ones, we really wanted to isolate what is it that they do differently than everybody else. And so, of course, just like we developed a lot of our other you know success based assessments, we asked them a lot of questions and looked at what is it that the very best tend to say in common that other people don't. And in one specific study of hockey players, they said, you know what, this is going to sound crazy, but then they'd lower their voice and they'd say, I can make time slow down. I can see the puck coming slower than everybody else. And we named it. We named it this, this experience of um, sort of slowing down time. It's not the right word for it, but we named it and we studied it. And I think if you're in that sense where you, no matter what your talent is, 
if you're really honest about it, it, you might get the sense that you're a little bit different than everybody else. That if you really talk about this with somebody and you're you're really in that place, it might sound a little mystic. It might sound a little different. It might sound a little bit overtly unique. And when you're describing something that's so natural, you're describing some not just something you've learned, not just a way you hope to be perceived, but a way that you can't help but be. That's that's pretty that's pretty amazing. That's like cutting right to your core. So my my reaction to that is, yep, it is a little mystic, but all 34 are. Uh, when you're really hitting on real talent, you're hitting on places where time disappears, places that you can't wait to do again, behavior that you can't help but have. Um, now, that being said, specific about empathy, um, we've talked about this in previous episodes, but it is perhaps one of the ones that gets, I think, misunderstood as being something you can magically acquire or being something that you have to have. And a lot of that has to do with the title. Um, empathy has, a, it's a, it's a $10,000 word, right? It's something that a lot of us, um, I think, are told that we need to have or, or it, it, it gets used to describe a lot of different behaviors. Uh, what we mean when we're talking about empathy, the Clifton Strengths theme of empathy might be a little bit different than what other people describe um, as just a, a great interpersonal skill. Um, so when we're talking about empathy, we really are talking about that talent, that ability to feel what other people are feeling. Now, I find that I talk about empathy a lot when it's low for leaders, when it's in their like bottom five of their Clifton Strengths. And when I describe it as, hey, the way we define empathy is walking into a room and feeling what other people are feeling, then usually when it's low, they'll say, okay, wait, that's not me. Now, the trick is to have, have them say, that's not me. And here's what that means. Here's either the benefit or the barrier or the, the extended understanding of myself by knowing that that's not me. What you don't want them to say is, that's not me and those people are crazy, or that's not me and I don't need that anywhere in my team. Um, but you know what? I think having low empathy could, could also be a benefit for people if, if it's just not you. Having high empathy really is defined by being able to be with people where they are and feel what they're feeling. I see sometimes empathy being used as an excuse for not treating people uh, nicely. I've, I, in, in other words, they'll be in a group setting and somebody will be mean and they'll be like, well, I don't have any empathy. <laughs> it's that's right. That's not true. That the yeah. opposite of empathy is not uncaring. Right. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, empathy doesn't mean caring. Um, and, and not having empathy doesn't mean not caring. Um, empathy is not the same as, <sighs> Empathy, the way we describe it, is just knowing, sensing, feeling. It's not that you're caring. It's that you're there. It's that you're aware and you're present. Now, great use of empathy is that you use that to make a connection or you use that to care or you use that to demonstrate um, an understanding and a presence with somebody. But if you don't have empathy, um, and this is our lesser theme challenge, so this will come back, spoiler alert, you need to know how you best connect. You need to know how you best care about people. Another uh, piece about empathy, uh, just because you have high empathy doesn't mean um, you should let people get away with negative behavior just because you can understand where they are and know that it's a hard place. Um, and maybe if you have low empathy, it doesn't let you off the hook for being a, a decent human being just to say, hey, I don't have empathy. I don't have to don't have to connect or care. Cool. What do I if I have it? What do I need to do more of? What are some things I could really be deploying? Yeah, let's talk about success. Let's talk about how you can invest in it. Um, practice putting words to the un or understated. Uh, speak up for clients, speak up for customers, speak up for people who you sense maybe are not being heard. Um, think about the role of a delegate. Act as a delegate or maybe even a champion for your peers. Um, where is their positive energy? Empathy isn't just about knowing when somebody's upset and feeling upset with them. It's also about sharing in celebration, sharing in excitement sharing in anticipation. Uh, pay attention to where that is. Um, and also pay attention to maybe where is there some hesitation? Where is there some anxiety? Practice putting what you're sensing into words that can help other people. That might mean that as a champion, you're helping your manager understand what your peers are going through. Or maybe as a emotional translator, you're helping other people understand each other even better and, and really discover what's, what's at the heart of what's going on. I also encourage people with empathy to take action quickly and firmly if you sense that someone is behaving in a way that's unhealthy for them. Um, this comes straight from our Clifton Strengths Resource Guide, which if you don't have it, you should pick it up. It's big and amazing, and it uh, says Resource Guide for Coaches, and it's available at shop.gallup.com is what it looks like. Um, but I think understanding somebody's emotional state doesn't mean you have to excuse negative behavior. 
when your empathy turns into sympathy, you might be seen as <clears throat> overly forgiving of behavior that you really shouldn't forgive. Mike, uh, Steve says in the chat room, he says, um, number three for my brother-in-law, and he's 30 years in sales and uses it to sense the connection during a sales cycle. He just knows if they're connecting with the client. And I, and I think that's a, that's a really good way. Oftentimes we think of that emotion in, in the sense of the negative emotions or if someone's feeling sad. I, I think it can also be for how connected is someone to this idea? How connected is this team to the concept? Are they feeling good about it or are we missing, right? Think about the power of being able to in a sales presentation or in any kind of presentation to be able to kind of have that sense of, are we hitting or are we missing? And then being able to adapt midstream, right? To be able to say, okay, I see we're not really necessarily connecting very well. Let us let me back up a little bit. How powerful is that? Not to just, you, you've been a part of those presentations where they just power through the entire thing mm -hmm. and they lost you like at minute five. And you know, you're know you sitting there arms crossed, looking around and no awareness, right? To, to how you're feeling. And yeah. so I think that's a good powerful example, right? Of that positive ability to... Am I making, we don't see empathy or we don't oftentimes talk about empathy as a salesperson, but this right. is a, a great example of how to use it to their advantage. And Jim, I think what you demonstrated there when you didn't just shift without saying it is, is sort of that leadership element of empathy. You know, you could feel it, know that it's right for you to shift and not even tell people you're shifting. But your example there of, hey, I'm sensing that this isn't landing or I feel like we should go a different direction gives you that opportunity to stop, to push pause on the on the forward progress, to ask for permission and connection in that moment uh, from that other person. It also demonstrates your talent out loud. And that is, um, that's probably part of that claim it aspect of great coaching of see the value, but also help other people understand the value. You talked about asking and that's what kind of things if with empathy, can you ask for, what should you do ask for more of, or what kind of environment would support you? So I think one of the things might be important to ask for is freedom to release your own emotion. Um, I saw this on some of our social posts this week, people with empathy saying, hey, how does other people, um, how do other people handle this? Uh, sometimes it can feel really heavy when you're feeling what everybody else is feeling because you sense all of that all at the same time. Sometimes it can feel like you're carrying a lot. So you probably will need some kind of a safe space, a trusted relationship, a practice that helps you just let it all out without judging. I'm not advocating venting. I think that venting is uh, practicing neuropathways that just have to get itched over and over again the more you do it. I am advocating um, some honest places where you don't have to be the person carrying it all um, and you can just talk about and, and be present with the emotions that you've absorbed. The other piece that I think you can ask for is access to people in multiple channels. So pay attention to when your intuition really is spot on. In season three, we talked about knowing when you're getting the best radar or knowing when your bandwidth is strongest. It might be one-on-one. -on -one. Um, if it is, then ask for more one-on-one -on -one time with people. Um, maybe you do better over the phone than you do over email. Um, maybe you are excellent at honing your empathy through text. Um, now, most people find, I, and this is purely through, through my own stories I've asked people about, um, most people find that empathy really is best with some sort of personal connection um, in person over the phone. If that's true for you, you have to advocate for that FaceTime. You have, you've got to ask for it. Um, uh, maybe you show up for a video call instead of just a conference call. Uh, and, and knowing that about yourself of when, you're, when your empathy is strongest and when your intuition is most accurate is going to help you ask for more of it. The other piece that I'd encourage people with high empathy to do is never eat alone. Eating, lunchtime, breakfast, it's an opportunity to sneak in connection time that a lot, that often others leave open. Uh, and you might find more availability with people than trying to find an, a meeting time on their calendar. So look at lunch and breakfast as some options to get some FaceTime. Yeah, that's a lot. We do that here a lot at Gallup, even though we don't necessarily pride ourselves <laughs> on being high in empathy uh, a, a lot of times. Um, we do spend a lot of time together. And I just love that advice because... It's those in-between moments. We just spent a whole bunch of time with our interns kind of going over some of the lessons learned over the last six weeks and some of those things. And it, interesting, Mike, a, a lot of them said, by the way, no empathy in the room uh, in, in the top fives. So I, don't, I don't think we had any of them. But they began to see that uh, they said to me that some significant moments happened in the cracks. 
It would mm. happen in the 15 minute conversations in a break or at lunch or what, what have you. Those are powerful moments. And I think those of us high in empathy can really take advantage of those moments. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be a one-on-one -on -one that's scheduled, right? It doesn't have to be a happy hour. It doesn't, it can be just in, in that moment when you're sensing something, right? And asking the strategic questions, right? They almost need to have those questions ready to go so they can kind of pry that yeah. out of someone. And you know, it's easy to feel like that's an indulgence, um, but I can't tell you the number of even like hard hitting executive strategic planning sessions I've led that have ended in an action plan to spend more time in the pub together. Like it is something that people will voice a need for. Yeah. So if you're the person who can strategically be looking for those cracks, you know, looking for the moments, looking for the opportunities to have that personal connection where other things aren't necessarily scheduled and getting in the way, you're serving your team. Yeah, right on. What do I need to worry about less? What are some things yeah. I don't need to carry? This is our let it go moment. <laughs> um, worry less about having a thick skin, being stoic, being unaffected in the face of an emotional mess. You're going to feel it. You're going to feel the emotional mess. So don't pretend that it's not affecting you. Um, and know what kind of self-care helps you release what you've absorbed. Admit that you're not going to be unaffected and let yourself be there. Let yourself feel it and then let yourself take care of it. That's some good advice. What to, when we're working with people that have empathy, what, what should we expect? What, what, so what kind of things can we see? Perfect. If you're, if you're working on a team or you're a manager of somebody with empathy, look for them to be in tune, intuitive. They might surprise you at how well they can pin you, um, but trust them. It's not a show. They're not trying to impress you. It is awareness. Um, awareness and presence of those who they're working around or playing around or living around. You might also expect a willingness to be led. Um, there's something that I think uh, empathy has in 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 combination. In, I'm trying not to say contrast. Um, similar to, <laughs> I think I had a stroke there. <laughs> so, <laughs> empathy. Yeah. It happens um, from time to time. Empathy and I would I would say also adaptability. Um, have, share this ability to be led by the present moment um, and and a willingness to really want to connect and and be present. Now the difference is adaptability does it uh, for that relationship building theme and then it wants to just sort of take on the um, the needs of the other person. Empathy I think has it in multi directions where it's not just about where are we going next and how do I serve your needs. Empathy is about I feel you. What are we going to feel next? Um, but because of that, the best plans really can change based on how your audience is reacting. What about recognition? This is a, we've learned this summer as I've been working a lot with the students, rec this key about recognizing people for caring in that. How would we recognize folks with, with the empathy? Look for when this person's gut has steered us away from, from the plan, but into something more perfect. Um, so look at times where they've said, you know what, I'm really, really picking up on something that needs to change and it's worked even better than you expected. Um, celebrate also the multi time dimension aspect of empathy. Think about their empathy, past, present, and future. So when have they uncovered something important in the past? How do they enhance the collaboration of the team right now? And what are we going to be doing in the future because of their perception, because of their intuition? I think empathy is one of those themes that can that feels like it's always there and it can't be improved. It is or it isn't. And that's not yeah. true, right? It's it can always be stretched, it can always grow. What, what what ways can we stretch and grow? You know, I'm coming back to your original question, Jim, and I'm thinking we really should talk about all 34 as magical superpowers a little bit more. Empathy seems a little bit easier to talk about that way for some reason. And because of that, you know, we talk about it as a sixth sense it seems like something you either have or you don't. Like you got your Hogwarts letter or you're a muggle. And I, I feel like we should really embrace empathy as being that powerful, but also being a power you can improve. So if you're helping somebody improve upon empathy, maybe help them know when and how to share what it is that they're picking up. Um, pay attention to empathy as an instrument and, and think about how you can fine tune it. So who are your most important stakeholders? Help them understand who their most important customers are. Help them focus their empathy or fine tune their empathy toward those people. 
Um, and that might mean that you are learning more about the culture, learning more about the industry, learning more about a product that helps you sort of fine tune what you're feeling. Um, also, play back to them great words that they've used to describe emotion. At this point, you really are helping them build that skill of vocabulary. So challenge them to develop a lot of different ways to develop an extensive vocabulary that they can use as a library to describe emotion. Empathy and communication are not the same thing. Um, empathy and analytical are not the same thing, but both of those might be great complementary partners to help you move from sensing into performance. So um, I think that that vocabulary for emotion, if you could play back great words, that's going to help them um, help them give a project a boost, help them give that performance a boost. Um, an example of that might be, hey, in that meeting we just had, I got the sense that you were feeling apprehensive about starting the interns on such a big project. Can you tell me more about that and what made it easier? That that sentence, you're using words that aren't just um, very, <laughs> that aren't just good. You're doing a little bit of a, a Robin Williams there, <laughs> Dead Poet Society. You have more interesting words um, and you're really helping nail what it is that you're sensing. So I think that is an example of where we really invest in a talent. We don't just let it be. We really start to turn it into something that is mature and that has the benefit of other people. What about partnering? Where would we go? What kind of things can we do if we want to partner with those and really energize them, charge them up, encourage them? How do we partner? If you're a partner to somebody with empathy, remember that you've got this beautiful tool right next to you. You're partnering with the emotional barometer in the room. So ask them what it is that they're picking up. Um, maybe even give them time to think about it. You know, hey, what was your impression of this? Or how did that land with so-and-so? Or when might be a good time for us to? Um, think about them as sort of your emotional oracle that you can that you can consult and, and allow them to have that space to be heard. Um, be honest with them as well um, about your own emotion, your own reaction. Um, they're going to know if you're not. <laughs> and They will appreciate your ability to speak their language if you can give them some words for how you're feeling. We uh, have been spending the season thinking about these challenges, the dominant theme challenge, and uh, you got some good ones today. So like don't it. forget, uh, we're taking these on to Instagram. So if you're out there at Strengths Talk, is Mike out on Instagram? If you want to follow Gallup, by the way, I got kind of chastised for this because we don't say this. We have a Life at Gallup uh, Instagram as well. If you want to follow that and some cool stuff, it's all about Summit going on right now. So if you want to follow that. Or on our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash called to coach. You can post those out there. Micah will post them as well. But Micah, what's this week's dominant theme challenge? So if empathy is a dominant theme for you, we've given you three different ways that you can invest in it. Um, each one of them should take you throughout the whole week. If you are listening to this um, in a time that is not the 12th of July, 2018, um, Think about this as something you could just do starting today, no matter what day it is. This is your your action plan here to go uh, move towards success. Number one, develop killer questions. And your challenge here is to share coffee or, or, or dessert or a snack with somebody and spend that entire conversation asking great questions that help that person describe their own experience and their own emotion. At the end of your conversation, debrief by yourself by listing the best questions you ask that person. Now, how do you know if it's a good question? Well, you know you've asked a good question if the other person talks more. So develop killer questions is number one. Number two, I want you to journal your emotions for one week. Give yourself some quick check-ins throughout the day. This might be something you do first thing in the morning, last thing at night. You might do it over lunch when you're not eating alone. But I want you just to, to, to get away from everything else and simply write down words for how you are feeling. Try to use different words uh, to describe your experience each time, but don't force yourself to because I also want you to be able to look for a pattern. The goal here is that you are expanding your awareness of, uh, of emotion. I noticed in a previous podcast about empathy, we talked about it being more than just picking up on positive or negative feelings. And it is, but that might be where it starts for you. So your ability to, to talk more broadly than just do I feel good or do I feel bad, but to really name how you're feeling is going to help you with your own awareness as well as it's going to help you sense um, the emotions of other people. And number three, I want you to go out and find a guided meditation. 
Um, I have a favorite. It's on a, a specific app that um, we're not affiliated with, but um, it's called Just Breathe. Um, and uh, you can search for a good one. You can go to Google. You can ask a yoga instructor. But I want you to find a guided meditation that'll take you for at least you know two minutes or so, help you breathe and help you release any emotion you might be holding on to that isn't yours. Um, so I, I find that this often happens with empathy as we pick everything up and we don't quite know how to let go of it. So I want you to try try some guided meditation. You might decide that this is for you. You might not, but I just want you to try uh, this week to see if it works. Some good stuff. I, You know what? Whether you have this high or not, do the meditation thing. Like I I, I need to, we've mentioned this a couple times, Micah, and I, I think it, it's fast as things move for all of us now. I just think the instant speed of communication and all the stuff that's happening, man, uh, just from a mental health perspective, I think we could all take a little advice this week. Maybe in the lesser, lesser theme challenge, you could do the yeah. same thing, right? Don't you yeah. think? Man, I, I found one. It was a two-minute podcast yesterday I listened to called Just Breathe. And um, two minutes, I was like, well, that's a waste of time. You know, why would I use that? Did it while I was driving. <laughs> and it was amazing. And 24 hours later, it made me better at talking to people. Just that, like, shut everything down and pay attention to yourself. Yeah, when when says just two minutes doesn't seem nearly enough for me. Well, then take five. Like you, yeah. no one's you do it or what, you, listen to it twice. <laughs> yeah. Two minutes seems like an eternity to me, right? To, to, to breathe for that. So to breathe. Yeah. What about the le the left? Oh, I can't say that. Those lesser theme challenge. Yes. If empathy is a lesser theme for you, and you sense that it might be getting you in your way, I've got two challenges. Number one, I want you to develop a conversation question that demonstrates how you care for others. Um, I want you to be honest with yourself. I want you to come up with a question that you'd really care about the answer to. Um, it might be something as simple as, hey, how are you feeling? Or it might be, what's most important to you today? Uh, how full is your tank? Whatever works best for you that you truly care about knowing, I want you to develop that, that question and then ask it five times this week to different people. Uh, and the second challenge, the second and last challenge for your lesser theme is I want you just to name what themes you have dominant that help you connect with other people. And don't just look for relationship building themes. You you might find so many different ways that other themes can connect with people. Often I'll coach somebody with low empathy who says, well, you know, I don't have that. And I also don't have other relationship building themes. So like clearly this is just going to be a deficit for me. I'll say, well, what makes you curious about other people? You know, what makes, uh, what attracts other people to you? Um, you you might find that you care about other people through analytical because you look for proof and evidence of of their stories or of what they're doing. You might find that I'm just going to look at my 34 here. I could put, pick any of these themes out and use it to connect with a person. You could. Con we're talking about focus in our next podcast. I think focus could be a, a theme that demonstrates that you care about somebody if you're really focused on that person and nothing else. It allows you to sort of um, eliminate distractions and just be present. So. The theme again, or the, the challenge again, is just to name what themes you have in your dominant themes that really help you connect with other people. Super cool, Micah. I'm uh, thinking about a new tool we have coming in the next couple days that uh, off the coach's blog, go to coaching.gallup.com. You can go back to season two. We get all these, we get these questions all the time here on Theme Thursday about what about empathy and strategic? What about empathy and futuristic? Well, Mike and I spent a whole two seasons okay. comparing those at the end of the show. And uh, we had our, our IT team over the summer work on a little tool off the resources tab on the coach's blog. So go to coaching.gallup.com. Don't do it right now if you're listening live because we still need to deploy it a little bit later today. But you can go in there and there is a theme dynamic section. By the way, if you haven't bought the book, there will be a link to the book you can buy there. Then down below, there'll be a little search bar and you can type in context. Kristen just put that in there. You can type in context and it will bring up a list of every time you and I have talked about context and fill in the blank. We haven't done them all, but we've done a lot of them. If you click on those tabs, they'll take you, or they click on those search results, they'll take you right to the spot in the video in season two when you and I talked about it, the miracle of technology, Micah. And so I thought I'd bring that up now because... Uh, we get a lot of the questions in the post show, right? A lot of folks uh, say to us all the time, what about empathy and, you know, relator? Um, this is a great tool we've put together. We've recorded a lot of those and we just want to make that available to you. So a little bit later today or tomorrow at some point off the coach's blog, we'd love to have you check it out. Coaching.gallup.com. Go to the resources tab, scroll down a little bit and you'll see it there. Micah, any final thoughts on empathy? 
I'm thinking about our whole our whole podcast so far and just coming back to the idea that it might seem a little bit mystical, but really they all are at their heart. Um, and to lean into that, to remember that it's not just a you have it or you don't. It's if you have it, make it better, invest in it, drive towards success. Yeah, you know, find find that spot and then just exploit it. That's kind of that's kind of what I say and uh, and take advantage of it in every way. Uh, I will say this too. One more reminder: if you're going to catch us at the summit, we have Theme Thursday stickers for you. You have to put them on your badge, which is going to be super Yay. cool. And uh, just show you'll get to tell the world that you're a Theme Thursday listener. If you miss this after the summit, we'll probably have stickers next year too. CliftonStrengthSummit.com. By the way, sold out. Pretty great, Micah. We sold out, had to close it. There are offerings to be able to pick up. Uh, if you want to just get the keynote sessions, we get a lot of questions on that. You can purchase access to just the keynote sessions. Head out to CliftonStrengthSummit.com. There'll be instructions on how to get that done while you're out there. We'll remind everyone to take full advantages of all the resources we have available at the Gallup Strength Center, GallupStrengthCenter.com. Send us your questions or comments. If you'd like to be a guest blogger, you can do that as well. Uh, we'll take, we'll consider anything that you write. Four to 600 words is kind of what we're looking for. We want it to be strengths related. You can send that to us in an email, coaching at gallup.com. Micah will get that. Put guest blogger in the subject line so that gets to Micah and we can consider that. You can also catch the video and recorded audio and downloadable audio for offline listening. We call that podcasting. It's available for you in just about every way to get it done is on our coach's blog, coaching.gallup.com. If you're interested in becoming a Gallup certified strengths coach and why wouldn't you be? You can see a list of all the courses that lead to that. There's 500 people on campus being trained right now. Court, not technically, but it's pretty close. Courses.gallup.com will get you there as well. Join our Facebook group again, facebook.com slash groups slash call the coach. We want to welcome a bunch of you who've come over in over the last couple of weeks from the webcast. Welcome. And we, uh, we're glad that you've come to join us and to listen to us. We are live just about every Thursday out here, 11 p.m. Central, uh, noon Eastern, and uh, everything that we do is on our Eventbrite site, gallop.eventbrite.com. I know I said a lot of addresses. You can rewind this thing and listen to it again. <laughs> Write them down. We'll go into some post show. You could only get the post show if you come out and listen to the live show. With that, we'll say goodbye, everybody. <laughs>